So, Chuck, if you could, please explain to me the difference between an E-flat tuba and an F-tuba. Sure, it, just like a B-flat tuba and a C-tuba, it's going to be a personal preference. Um, basically, when tubas started, uh, when they were invented in the first half of the 1800s, you had them originally in Austria and then Germany, and then shortly thereafter in England and France. And the key instruments that they chose to play in Austria and Germany were in F. And when you came to uh, England and France, they played E-flat tubas. And so for a long time, our tradition here was to play E-flat tubas because our trading relationship was just better with England and France during that time than it was with Austria and Germany. Um, fast forward, when uh, the world got smaller, uh, German conductors started coming over and asking for our musicians to play F-tubas in the orchestras. And so we started playing more F-tuba, and uh, then that will bring up the difference between rotary and piston valves and things like that. Um, but it's going to be a sound co color difference. I think uh, a Germanic F-tuba is a little bit uh, more colorful. It has a little bit more depth of sound. And an E-flat tuba generally has a better low register, but it sounds a little more like a scaled-down uh, B flat or C tuba. Okay. So um, we did mention the E flat and the F tuba, and typically most B flat and C tuba students are going to be in some sort of a large ensemble setting. Um, when would you recommend getting into an E flat or an F tuba? Is it still a large ensemble setting kind of tuba? Sure. So there are multiple uses for E flat tuba or an F tuba. A generalization is that your F tubas and your E flat tubas are for playing high and you use them for solo repertoire. So a lot of students don't get them until they're in college and they start learning more demanding literature or playing high parts in orchestras and things like that. Um, but they're also, it's a smaller instrument and they have a different sound than the contrabass tubas. And a lot of times you don't want to play a big tuba in a small ensemble. So if you're playing in a brass quintet, a lot of times you can play E flat tuba or F tuba on the bottom. Or if you're in a tuba quartet, if you're playing the first tuba part, which is higher, you might want to play an F tuba or an E flat tuba. Um, but then in your concert band music, it, you know, as it gets harder, the parts are divided. There's a high part and a low part. And sometimes that was written that way, not just to play high notes and low notes, but to change sound. Because uh, realistically, at this point, tuba players have progressed to a point where you don't need a high tuba to play high. They can play all of that literature on a big tuba. Most times they're looking for a different sound concept. Okay. Um, and I have also heard a rumor that um, a lot of euphonium players sometimes might enjoy playing an E-flat or an F because there's less piping and it's a little more, more home feeling for them, correct? Yeah, I think that that's a great place for a euphonium player to start when they look into doubling on tuba. And I, I think E-flat tuba generally lends itself better just because it's a compensating instrument. They're used to thinking that way instead of adding down the fifth valve and doing alternate fingerings to play in that lower register. So I think it feels more like home to a euphonium player. But that said, that's a personal choice too. And if a euphonium player wants to play F tuba or B flat tuba or C tuba, you know, there are a lot of uh, euphonium players that play those instruments really, really well at a high level. Hey music man viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the link down here and find our newest material by clicking over here. Thanks for watching.